वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल दिस इज ट्रेडी स्टॉम एंड यू आर वाचिंग फोर्थ पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट इफ नरूटो चेंज्ड आफ्टर वे बार्क इफ यू एंजॉय दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल नो वेस्टिंग नो मोर टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट द स्टोरी आफ्टर 3 डेज नरूटो हैड बीन अनकॉन्शियस फॉर 3 डेज फॉलोइंग द इनवेजन बिकॉज़ हिनाटो वाज हिज गर्लफ्रेंड शी वाज फोर्स्ड टू सुपरवाइज द शिनोबी रैंक्स अंटिल नरूटो अवोक She was currently doing paperwork in Naruto's room, which she despised. I wish I knew about the shadow clone jutsu. Hanada reflected as she signed another piece of paper. How did I re-emerge as the temporary Hokage? She pondered. Flashback 3 days before. Hanada had just arrived at the academy to find four squads of sound shinobi outside, along with a pile of dead academy students and teachers. Hanada was about to vomit but resisted the urge. We need to go inside. Hanada spoke as her wings reformed. I'll enter through the roof and you'll go through the back where there will be at least one team. Hanada gave the order as they nodded. Hanada spread her wings and took flight. She landed on the roof without being noticed by the sound shinobi. her veins on the side of her head protruded by a kugan hanada considered this as she gained 360 degrees of perfect vision and looked around the school for students she noticed some in the cafeteria hanada crept through the roof door and made her way through the halls to the cafeteria she pushed the door open and immediately used her wings to block a kanai i'm hanada aruka sensei Hanada said this before being suffocated in a hug by four children. Hello, you four, Hanada said, hugging her sister and her three friends Konohamaru, Udon, and Moegi. What's going on, Hanada? Iruka inquired. Sound and Suna took over Konoha. Hanada stated. Naruto Kun is engaged in battle with Gara the one-tailed Jinchuriki. Hanada added as she lowered her gaze. He also had to deal with Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki, who had been temporarily revived by Orochimaru's impure resurrection's jutsu. Hanada stated, "He was able to defeat them, but only at the expense of three terrible wounds to his stomach." She elaborated, "I saw him using chakra to slow the bleeding, but that takes a lot of chakra." Hanada, "Are you all right?" Iruka inquired. I'm fine, not a scratch, and my feathers can become as hard as steel. She informed him. But we have to get out of here. Hanada stated. There isn't any way. When Anbu said she was landing next to her, she immediately inserted her wing into the man's chest. How? Did you know I wasn't an Anbu? The man asked before collapsing. My name is Hyuga. Hanada addressed the dead man. Byakugan. As her Byakugan activated, Hanada exclaimed. The two Anbu sent with me are no longer alive. Four teams patrol the front, while two teams patrol the back. Does the cellar have any tunnels, Aruka Sensei? Hanada inquired as she attempted to look. I'm not sure. Aruka stated. The principal would have known, but he died protecting the students during the rush. As Hanada drew him and the other teachers away from the students, Aruka told her, "What exactly is it, Hanada? Now that Hokage Sama has died, the Anbu has appointed Naruto as village leader until a suitable replacement is found." Hanada informed them as they exclaimed, "We need to get to the cellar because it's safer than here." Hanada stated as she examined the windows. Aruka Sensei, I'll take the middle, you'll take the front, you'll take between them and me, and you too will take the back. Hanada said, pointing at them. On the roof, Hanada noticed a chakra signature. Who is he? Hanada reflected as she noticed the figure running through the corridors towards them. When Hanada realized who it was, her eyes widened. Father Hanada wondered as she saw Hiyashi burst through the doors. 
They're getting antsy out there, Hiyashi said, his Byakugan activated. What are you doing here, Hiyashi Sama? One of the teachers inquired. My daughter was in danger, and I discovered my other daughter here as well. Hiyashi stated. Consider it. Hiyashi elaborated. What's the plan? He inquired. Father, we're going to the cellar. Hanada stated. You'll be guarding the center with me. Hiyashi raised an eyebrow and nodded as she spoke. All right, students, please form three rows of three. Hanada spoke in a motherly tone. You stay close to me, Hanabi-chan. Why does she get special treatment? One of the students inquired. She has used her by Akugan. Hiyashi stated plainly. It's not as powerful as mine or Hanada's, but it's better than nothing. Hiyashi explained while Hanabi blushed slightly. Please hurry up and come on. As the students filed in, Hanada spoke up. I'm hoping to save them all. Hanada reflected as they began to move through the corridors. Stop now. She exclaimed as everyone came to a halt. I'm taking him. As he walked past the students towards a tall man, Hiyashi said. Hey, you think you can beat me? The man asked, looking up at Hiyashi with calm collective eyes. Take care, father. Hanada and Hanabi called out as Hanada escorted the students out. Hanada's Byakugan was darting around, looking for enemies. Where have all of them gone? I'm sure some have sneaked in. When Hanada's eyes caught sight of a faint chakra signature, she thought. Do you know the chakra signatures of all the students in the academy, Hanabi-chan? Hanabi nodded faintly as Hanada whispered. Take a look at the plant to the far left. I'm not aware of anyone named Hanada Ne Chan. Hanabi said as Hanada nodded and flapped her wings into the air, going through a quick sequence of hand signs. Blessed art, thousand feathers. Hanada exclaimed as her feathers flew at the person who deflected the majority of them. Hanada grinned. Blessed art, cyclone of thousand feathers. Hanada exclaimed once more as the feathers spun around the man, slicing him up and killing him. Hanada could feel the toll that using those attacks was taking on her. Let's get this party started. As Hanada landed on the ground, her feathers returned to her wings. Hanada Nei Chan, you're losing strength, are you okay? Hanabi spoke in hushed tones. It's nothing, Hanabi Chan. I'll be fine. As they continued on their way, she told her younger sister. I'm not sure I'll be able to do that jutsu a third time. Hanada reflected as her sister regarded her with suspicion. Hanada, we're almost there, Aruka said. Okay. As the group approached a door, she called back. She stood there watching as Aruka's assistant opened the door. Hanada reacted quickly, moving to the front of the ground in the blink of an eye as her wings grew, shielding everyone except the instructor from an explosion. That used up a lot more of my chakra, she thought as she tucked her wings behind her back and turned to face the man. He's badly hurt, but he's alive. Hanada spoke as she and Aruka lifted the man and carried him down the stairs into the cellar. They knew we'd go to the cellar, but I can't feel anything and my Byakugan can't see anything. Hanada reflected as she looked around. Hanada smirked as she walked and pushed a button, causing a section of the wall to move back and to the side. Hanada noticed movement on the outskirts of her vision. They're on their way. Go escort them. Hanada requested Aruka. But. Do it. Hanada gave a firm order as she walked towards the stairs. Aruka nodded and led the student down the corridor. Hanada had reached the top of the stairs, where she could see all six squads in front of her. I might not make it through this. Hanada pondered as she gazed at the sound shinobi. Hey, she's kind of cute. 
Maybe we should play with her for a while. A man stated. I don't like the way you're talking about my daughter. Before two of them fell, a male voice said from behind the group. 8 trigrams and 64 palms. As a man sneaking up behind Hanada fell to the ground, a feminine voice exclaimed. Hanada turned to see Hanabi standing behind her. We are Hanada Nei family. Chan's Hanabi said with a smile. We're going to fight together. As the group attacked the two girls, she added. Katen. Exclaimed a male voice as a dome of chakra threw two of the men back. Neji Ni San. Hanada yelled. Good day, Hanada Sama. Neji stated. We are family, as Hanabi Sama said, and we will fight together. As they all attacked the squads, he said. Feather Barrage. Blessed Art. Hanada exclaimed as hundreds of feathers were launched at the Shinobi. Blessed Art. Cyclone of Feather Barrage. As Hanabi, Neji, and Hiyashi incapacitated or killed the Shinobi, the feathers began to circle them faster and faster. Hanada got down on one knee. Hanada-sama, are you alright? Neji inquired. I'm going to be fine. As she stood, Hanada said. I'll need a good night's sleep to regain my chakra. Hanada pondered. You're deceiving me, Hanada-sama. Neji explained calmly. All I need is some rest, but I can't get it while this invasion is going on. Hanada stated. Don't overdo it, Hanada-sama. Neji stated. I won't. Hanada made a promise. Let's go, Neji. You accompany Hanabi-chan back to the other shinobi's father, and I will assist the other shinobi. Hanada nodded, but Hanabi remained hesitant. Neji pressed his fingers to the back of Hanabi's head, causing her to pass out. Neji lifted her up and dashed towards the tunnel. How much longer can you hold out, Hanada? Hiyashi inquired solemnly. I can only use Taijutsu to fight. Hanada stated. I'll pass out if I use any more chakra. As the two leapt away, she told her father. The gentle fist is based on chakra, Hiyashi explained. QB Chan has been teaching me the gentle fist style and another for the past month. Hanada said something shocking to Hiyashi. And, no, she's not a demon. She continued as she jumped away. Hanada and Hiyashi landed on the ground and expertly collaborated to kill the two men attacking Konoha Shinobi. Come on. Let's go to the arena where there are still people. When Hanada gave the order, one of the men opened his mouth but quickly closed it due to Hiyashi's glare. They arrived to find Kakashi and Gai engaged in battle with multiple sound shinobi. Hanada smirked as she saw the few remaining sound shinobi. Blessed art. Death feathers guided. Hanada exclaimed as a hundred feathers launched from her wings and flew towards the sound shinobi, embedding themselves in the sound shinobi's necks, chests, and stomachs. Hanada collapsed into her father's arms. Several hours later. When Hanada awoke, she found herself in a white room. Naruto was in the bed next to her when she looked around. My charka remains low. She sat up slowly, thinking. Anbu was stationed in the room, she noticed. It's a good thing you're awake, Hanada-sama. Anbu stated. What exactly happened? Hanada inquired. Naruto-sama triumphed over Gara. The lady stated. He is currently unconscious due to severe blood loss and chakra exhaustion. She informed her. Because you've proven to be a good leader, and because Naruto-sama is unconscious, you'll have to take over as leader because you're also his girlfriend and know him best. She stated. W what? Hanada stumbled. 
you are the leader until Naruto awakens or a more suitable leader is chosen. The woman informed her. Right now, the council is waiting for one of you to wake up. Bring me to them. Hanada said as she struggled out of bed. End of flashback. It was a dreadful council meeting. She could only make out Jiraiya, Hokage, and next. Ah, they gave me a migraine. She rubbed her temples, thinking. Why can't you wake up already, Naruto-kun? Hanada inquired. Hum? A groggy voice inquired. Naruto-kun. Hanada exclaimed, turning around to see her blonde boyfriend wince in pain as he rubbed his eye. He looked down at his stomach and saw that there was still blood seeping from it. Don't move, you're still hurt. She exclaimed, gently pushing back against the bed. What happened? Asked Naruto. You've been out of commission for three days. Hanada stated. And I've been sick with worry. She went on to say. Sorry? Naruto inquired, winced in pain. What happened while I was gone? Naruto inquired. Um, because being your girlfriend put me in the position of temporary Hokage. Hanada stated. I mostly signed papers. She sighed slightly. Okay. Naruto stated that he should sit up straighter. The council has been looking for a new Hokage for some time. Hanada stated. Aero Sensei was nominated but declined because he needs to maintain his spy network. She continued as Naruto nodded. Never do anything like that again. Hanada said quietly before hugging him. I cannot guarantee that. As he wrapped his arms around her, Naruto said. However, I promise not to get hurt like that again. Naruto added as he gently squeezed her. I apologize for interrupting you too, but I need Naruto to accompany me. Jiraiya spoke through the window. But he only just awoke. Hanada yelled. The next Hokage has been determined. Jiraiya explained. And Naruto and I are going to find her. He went on to say. All right. Naruto said as he sat up and grabbed his stomach. Naruto. I must complete this Hanadaheim. Naruto interrupted the girl. I promise to be gentle. He went on to say. Okay. Hanada agreed reluctantly. When are we leaving? Naruto inquired. It'll be 30 minutes. Jiraiya said before disappearing. Naruto exhaled a shaky breath. You can't go, Naruto-kun, you're still seriously hurt. Hanada stated. I have no choice. Naruto stated. For the same reason that Serutobi Gigi did not cancel the Chunin exams when he learned about Orochimaru, we must maintain a strong front. Naruto explained as he struggled to lift his shirt over his head. Hanada shook her head and assisted him in putting on his clothes. Naruto-kun, please stay safe. Hanada stated. I'll do my best. Naruto responded with another shaky breath. You have to be safe as well, Naruto said. I'll do my best, Naruto-kun. Before hugging him, Hanada said. It will take us some time to get to the gate. She went on to say. You are now a hero. Oh Noah, Naruto murmured. That means there will be more fangirls. Hanada let out a low growl as Naruto whispered again. They're not going to touch Naruto-kun. Hanada spoke in a dangerous tone. I wouldn't want anyone else to touch me except you. Naruto whispered into her ear, sending a shiver down her spine. My arrow Tenshi, my little arrow Tenshi. He also made her blush. That's not something you should say. Hanada mumbled timidly. Naruto kissed her on the neck, causing a soft moan to escape her lips. 
W we should get going before we get too deep into this and Aero Sensei shows up to take you. Hanada spoke quietly. Hum, I could always put up a sound and sight barrier. Naruto whispered something into her ear. As tempting as it is, I must decline. Hanada said as she pushed him away gently. You're in pain, and I can be a little rough at times. Hanada blushed as she admitted. In remembrance, Naruto rubbed his shoulder. You're right. With a groan of pain, Naruto slipped into his cloak. I still don't think you should go. Hanada informed him. I recognize Hanadaheim. Naruto stated. However, Aero Sensei desires. Never call me that. Hanada and Naruto both heard a distant yell. Naruto blinked several times. That was strange. Naruto said as he leaned in for a kiss, but she resisted. Nah. -uh. Hanada stated. No kisses until you've been healed. Hanada elaborated. Consider it a punishment. She stated. Naruto sighed and flipped his hood up. You certainly know how to punish a man. Naruto mumbled as he walked, wrapping his arm around Hanada for support. When the two left the hospital, he was surprised that people stopped to ask if he was okay. Even though his wound was still bleeding, Naruto would always respond that he was fine. Remember, Naruto-kun, to change the bandage every other hour. Hanada informed him as they approached the gate. Also, before rebandaging it, clean it out. She informed him. Indeed, Hanada-chan, Naruto stated. If you don't take proper care of it, I'll find out. Hanada added, pointing to her eyes. I'll tell if you're lying. She went on to say. All right, Hanada-chan, we need to get going. Naruto stated. Bye, Naruto-kun. I'll miss you. She stated. I know, Naruto smirked. Come on, Naruto, we have to get going. Jiraiya screamed. Okay, old pervert. Naruto retaliated angrily and winced in pain. Damn. He hissed in pain, limping over to Jiraiya. I'm still hurt, you know. Naruto sighed and pointed to his stomach. And for some inexplicable reason, Kyuubi Chan hasn't fixed it. Naruto elaborated. All right, come here. Jiraiya said as he performed a series of hand gestures and hovered his hand over his stomach. Kyuubi will be unavailable for a while. He stated. She almost has no chakra. That's a bummer. As the two began to walk away, Naruto said. Naruto and Jiraiya were walking into one of the border villages that dot the land of fire. Naruto's bandages needed to be changed again, and they needed to gather information and food. Alright, Naruto, we'll be staying here for a few days. Jiraiya explained. And I'll show you the three flaws of a male shinobi. Money, females, and gambling are three of them. Jiraiya explained. Hand over your money pouch now, he said. What's the point? Naruto inquired. You have more money than I do, and you gamble and peep on women. Naruto said this as women began to stare at Jiraiya, to which Naruto responded squarely. He removed his hood, and girls aged 10 to 20 stared at the handsome boy. Plus, I already have a girlfriend, Naruto explained as the two heard disappointed groans. A daring woman approached him. Your girlfriend doesn't have to know if you have a little fun, Shinobi-kun. According to the woman. My girlfriend is the Byakugan's heir, so she should know. Naruto responded indifferently, oblivious to the woman's stunning figure. I am liberated, Jiraiya explained. I'm sorry, but I don't like old men. As she returned her gaze to Naruto, the woman said. Byakugan? A Konoha dujutsu known as one of the most powerful in history, 
Anyone who wields it has the ability to see chakra, chakra points, and has X-ray vision, which means she could tell if I am lying. He added indifferently as he fished out his large gama money pouch and tossed it at Jiraiya before walking away. Jiraiya greedily looked into the pouch when pink dust puffed out and covered him, quickly followed by a boxing glove being attacked by a spring and hitting him in the face. Naruto's pained laughter could be heard in the distance by Jiraiya. You shouldn't have looked that way, old perv. As he walked away, Naruto yelled angrily. I'll see you at the hotel. Naruto called as he walked away from the old man. As Naruto walked away, several women laughed at Jiraiya. I'm going to get that boy. Jiraiya pondered as he looked into the pouch for a note. Do not think about getting me back. My retaliation usually involves property damage, signed Naruto. Jiraiya read while staring at the kitsune Hanyu doodled on the bottom of the note. Naruto is involved. Naruto was strolling through the village. Hum. Seems like a fair today, Naruto thought as he walked around the booths. Naruto came across one that sold masks. Naruto approached the masks and examined them. Is there anything that interests you? A man inquired. Not at all. Naruto answered truthfully. Me wearing a mask is kinda pointless because I usually have my hood up. Naruto stated. However, my younger brother and his three friends would like some. Naruto stated. And. My Naruto considers Konohamaru to be his younger brother. How old are they? The man inquired. Eight, Naruto said. There are two boys and two girls. Naruto elaborated. These are popular with the ladies. He said this while arranging a few masks. And these are popular with the boys. He added more laying out. All right, I'll get the cat and bird masks for the girls and the dog and monkey masks for the boys. As he placed some money on the counter, Naruto said. Thank you for coming, sir. As he put the masks in a bag, the man said. Naruto continued on his journey until he came across a kimono shop. Naruto walked in and saw a 14-year-old girl behind the counter. Hmm, how may I assist you? The girl inquired flirtatiously. Well, I guess I should get a kimono for my girlfriend. Naruto observed the girl deflate slightly. Well, I'll need her bust size, waist size, hip size, height, eye color, hair color, and favorite color. Before Naruto told her Hanada's measurements and favorite color, she said. Are you kidding me? The girl inquired. Nope, Naruto said flatly. What color blue is her favorite? She inquired. Can you see my eye color? As the girl nodded, Naruto inquired. That's a little darker. Wow, you certainly know a lot about your girlfriend. How long have you known her? She inquired. Five years, Naruto said. How long have you been together? She inquired. Nearly three months. Naruto described the girl as stunning. Sheesh, I wish some of my late boyfriends had been as perceptive as you. She mumbled something. What material do you want this to be made of? She inquired. Don't worry, you'll find someone who loves you for who you are. Naruto stated. As well as your finest and softest silk. Naruto elaborated. Our best silk is pricey. She issued a warning. Have you ever heard of the Konoha Black Death? Naruto inquired, a smirk on his face. He's well known in the land of fire. She stated it matter-of-factly. I'm a huge fan of his. Well, you're one of my many fans. Naruto stated that he shocked the girl. I am Naruto Uzumaki, also known as Konoha's Black Death. Naruto said, bowing his head as she stared at him. I would have bowed properly, but a recent fight left me with a stomach injury. Naruto informed her. 
Are you T the B Black D Death? As Naruto nodded, she stuttered. She let out a happy squeal. Wait until my friends find out I'm working on something for the most wanted man in the land of fire. Between squeals of delight, she said. Don't forget to inform them that I am already taken. Naruto informed her. If you kiss me, I'll give you half off. She informed him. No need, I can afford whatever price you set. Naruto said, laughing. What is your secret, Naruto-kun? Asked a voice that made Naruto stiffen. No way, it can't be. As he turned, Naruto reflected. Can I cut his legs and arms off so he can't pull another stunt like that? Asked a tall blue man. Kisame and Itachi Uchiha. As he looked at the two, Naruto said. Come with us, Naruto-kun. No one will be harmed. Itachi stated. Why don't we go outside so I can get out without blowing up this shop like I did that in last time? Naruto proposed. I don't fall for the same trick twice, Naruto-kun says. Itachi stated. I'm not sure I'll last more than a few seconds with them. As Naruto watched Itachi activate his Mangekyu Sharingan, he had a thought. Naruto's eyes immediately lowered. You do realize I have control over what you have in you, right? Itachi inquired. Well, she's currently low on chakra, so I don't have any running through me. Naruto said as he smashed his way through the window onto the street. Where has Aero Sensei gone? Naruto reflected as he spun and painfully drew his katana. Naruto coughed up some blood after blocking a downward chop from Kisame. Wind style. Slash airstrike. Naruto screamed as he swung an upward blade of wind. Kisame was blown into the air by the wind. Naruto grabbed his stomach as he stumbled to his feet and stared at the two. Naruto felt his blood flow into the bandage. I'm not going to last long like this. Naruto reflected as he attempted to stop the flow of blood. I'll bleed to death if you keep doing this. Naruto warned against attempting to force them to leave. That's unacceptable, Naruto-kun. What would Hanada-chan think? Itachi stated. Don't approach her. Naruto issued a low-key warning. My, that warning is a little late. We just got back from Konoha. Itachi explained calmly. Naruto took a threatening step forward before collapsing to his knees. If you hurt her, you will pay. Naruto said dangerously, clutching his stomach in pain. He touched the blood-soaked bandages. Itachi! exclaimed the three shinobi. They turned to look at Sasuke. I have holded my hate for you, and now I will kill you. As his Sharingan flared to life, Sasuke yelled. I thought you said you were the last Uchiha to possess the Sharingan. Kisame stated. Naruto practiced a few hand gestures. Summon. He whispered and pressed his hand against the ground, revealing a small one-tailed blue fox. Krona, find Jiraiya. Naruto spoke softly. Of course, Naruto-sama. Krona said before fleeing. Naruto panted and tried to stand, but fell back to his knees. Naruto stood there watching Sasuke charge at Chidori. Why would Kakashi teach that to Sasuke? As he watched Sasuke charge at Itachi, Naruto reflected. Itachi easily grabbed the arm and violently twisted it, making a loud snapping noise. You didn't keep enough rage in you, little brother. Before kicking Sasuke into the wall, Itachi said. Itachi appeared in front of Sasuke immediately after his back hit the wall. Itachi grabbed Sasuke by the throat, lifted him up, and looked him in the eyes. You were duped by the same ruse. When Sasuke screamed and fell unconscious, Itachi said. Now, Naruto-kun, where were we? He asked, 
turning to see a tall man with long white hair standing behind Naruto. Kisame, we're leaving because we don't have the strength to fight both Asanin and Naruto-kun. As the two leapt away, Itachi said. Are you alright, Naruto? Jiraiya inquired solemnly. I've had a lot of blood loss. Naruto responded by lifting his shirt to reveal the dark red bandages. Naruto screamed in agony. Check on Sasuke. I needed to rebandage this anyway. Naruto elaborated. Fine. Jiraiya said as he walked over to Sasuke, but his gaze was fixed on Naruto. Dynamic entry. Yelled a male voice before Jiraiya yelped in pain. Naruto raised his head to see Guy standing over Jiraiya's body. Naruto blinked several times. Wow, the ultimate weirdo defeated the ultimate pervert. Naruto muttered. I apologize, Master Jiraiya. Guy exclaimed as he assisted the Toad Sage in standing. How come you kicked me? Jiraiya exclaimed as snakes tore him and Guy apart. Naruto, what happened? Anko insisted. Sasuke Teme came to exact vengeance for a prank I played a while back. Naruto only told half the truth. As you can see, he was the recipient of an ass whooping. Naruto looked up at her, smiling. Do you think Sasuke Teme can beat me? Naruto inquired. He's deceiving me. She had this thought when she saw Guy pick up Sasuke. What was the joke? I took a picture of him in a cute pose and sold it to the females in my class for 20 Ryo each. Naruto told her the truth. What made him so endearing? Anko inquired. Ask Sakura, she bought 50 photos, you'll have a great time with them. Naruto responded. How is Naruto's wound? Anko inquired as she noticed the blood dripping to the ground. It reopened, Naruto said. Guy knocked out the ultimate pervert just as I was about to rewrap it. Naruto smiled as he added. That reminds me of something. Anko spoke as she stalked over to Jiraiya, lifting him off the ground with her snakes and pointing a kanai at his groin. If he returns a pervert, I will neuter you and have the medics reattach them so Hinata can have a go at them. As Guy and Naruto covered their groins in fear, she threatened. Anko-chan, we have to get started while our. As a kanai whizzed between his legs, he trailed off. Another word, and I'm not going to miss it. As she dropped Jiraiya, she said something lowly. Goodbye, Naruto-kun. Anko exclaimed before bolting. The villagers began to look into the street at that point. Naruto was still on his knees. You know I need help, you perv. Naruto stated that the blood loss had made him feel weak. Shut up, brat, a freak just kicked me in the head. Jiraiya explained. Hum, I got two kanai stabs and a reopened katana stab in my stomach. Which is more serious? Naruto inquired, sarcastically. Jiraiya shook his head before picking up Naruto. Do you realize Hanada will kill you when you return? Jiraiya informed him. Probably, but I couldn't run. Jiraiya shook his head as Naruto told him. She won't care about that. All she'll remember is that you did something risky. He informed Naruto. Can you please leave me in an alley? I'm sure it'll be less painful. As they walked into a hotel, Naruto joked and let out a pained laugh. After two days. Naruto had spent the previous two days in bed, allowing his wound to heal. Jiraiya had searched the area for signs of Akatsuki and his former teammate. Aero sensei you never told me who the new Hokage will be. Naruto stated. It's Tsunade Haim, the slug princess, from my team. Jiraiya explained. She is an exceptional field medic nin. 
If she wasn't out of shape, she'd beat me in a heartbeat. With a small blush, he said. Doesn't she have big breasts? Naruto inquired, emotionless. Oh my goodness, you'll never see one as big as hers. Jiraiya said this while drooling down his chin. I'm not interested in that kind of thing. Naruto stated plainly. Not even if Hanada gets big breasted? He wondered as he imagined Hanada in the future. A katana was pressed tightly against his throat, interrupting his thought. Do not think of Haim in that way. Naruto forewarned. Only I can imagine her in that way. In his head, Naruto added. Do you have a lead on your teammate? Naruto inquired while sheathing his katana. Yeah, she was allegedly seen in a town about a week away. Jiraiya informed Naruto. Supposedly, Naruto inquired. She's been avoiding me for the past 13 years, Naruto, and I couldn't find her anywhere. Jiraiya informed him. I wanted her to look after you. Jiraiya pondered. When are we going? Naruto inquired. She might not be there right away, Jiraiya warned. Naruto nodded and stood up using his katana. This katana was not meant to be a crutch, Naruto reflected as he struggled to get dressed. Come on, we have to get out of here, Jiraiya said as Naruto nodded and the two exited the hotel. I have something for Hanadaheim, Naruto said as he approached the kimono store. Naruto pushed open the door to reveal the girl behind the counter. Hello, Naruto said, smiling at the girl. Hello Naruto, the young lady said. I'm sorry about the window, Naruto apologized. I'll pay for it, he said as he took a scroll from his cloak and placed it on the table, writing a kanji on it, and a pile of money appeared, which the girl gawked at. This should cover it, Naruto said as the girl nodded. Um, here's your kimono, I hope your girlfriend likes it, the girl stated, clearly disappointed. Thank you, Naruto said, pulling out another seal and sealing the kimono into it. I wonder if this will prevent Hanadaheim from murdering me? As he walked out of the store, Naruto reflected. After seven days. Naruto and Jiraiya had only recently arrived in the next town. A festival was taking place. Okay, Naruto, go have some fun for an hour or two, but later I have a very powerful ninjutsu for you to learn, Jiraiya said. All right, Naruto said as the two parted ways. The perv stole my money pouch, Naruto reflected. Jiraiya is present. Jiraiya took the money pouch from him and opened it. When he looked inside, nothing happened, and a blast of blue paint coated his face. How does he fit this much paint in his wallet? Jiraiya thought as he wiped away some of the paint and looked into the wallet again, only to be pelted by water and purple powder. I think I might kill the boy, Jiraiya thought as he noticed several people laughing at him. Naruto is involved. I wonder if Aero sensei opened my wallet? As he walked through the vendors, Naruto reflected. Naruto sighed with boredom and his stomach growled as he played a few games. I should get some food, Naruto thought as he walked to the food section, purchased a large amount of food, and sat down to eat it. He was surrounded by a swarm of females. Why me? Naruto pondered. Who are you? Inquired a young lady. Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said before biting into his food. That's an interesting name, the girl commented. Thank you, Naruto simply said. Are two word responses all you know? She inquired. Could be, Naruto said. Do you have any girlfriends? She inquired. Yes, I do, Naruto replied. I am related to the village's leader, she explained. You can be influential if you date me, the girl added. My girlfriend's name is Hanada Hyuga, the eldest daughter of Hiyashi Hyuga, the head of the Hyuga clan, Naruto stated simply. Plus, 
I'm the Black Death of Konoha. I don't need any more power, Naruto said as she stared at him. She wouldn't know if you were having a fling, the girl insisted. You obviously don't know about Konoha clans, Naruto said as he turned to face the girl. The Hyugas have the Byakugan, it is a dojutsu that allows them to see everything in 360 degrees, chakra, chakra points, and see through things, tell me do you think it would be wise to mess with her? Naruto inquired. The young lady growled and stalked away. What's the matter with me? Naruto reflected as he finished his meal. I need to find Aero Sensei, Naruto reasoned. Sorry ladies, but I have to get going, Naruto said as he struggled to his feet. I despise being wounded, Naruto said before being stopped by two guards. They were both heavily armed. What? Naruto inquired. You have been requested by the head of this village, one of the guards said. I'm sorry, but I'm on a mission, Naruto explained as they intercepted him again. That's irrelevant, the other said. Do you want to fight Konoha? Naruto inquired. I'm on a mission to find the new Hokage, and it only takes a message from me to bring a hundred Anbu here, Naruto warned. Now move, Naruto said angrily. The guards were standing their ground. Naruto's katana was in his hand in an instant, and the guards drew their weapons. Or at least the hilts of their weapons. Do not mess with me, I am Naruto Uzumaki, the temporary Hokage of Konoha, and the Black Death of Konoha, Naruto warned as he passed the two terrified guards. Sheesh, they think they can boss people around just because they have weapons, Naruto thought as he walked, surrounded by thirty guards. The head of the village wants to see you, one of them said. Naruto drew his katana and held it so he could keep an eye on his back. Do you realize I'm a fifth degree master of Kenjutsu? Naruto inquired. Put your weapons away, a big man said. Uzumaki-sama, I apologize for their rudeness, the man said. My name is Hakoda Manra, the man explained. I just wanted to apologize for my daughter's disrespect, he explained. Think nothing of it, Naruto said as he sheathed his own weapon and hissed in pain. I need to go meet Jiraiya sensei right now, Naruto said, feeling strange calling Jiraiya with such reverence. I apologize for holding you up, Hakoda said. No problem. Um, one question, Naruto replied. What's the closest thing to the main gate? A hot spring, a strip club, or a place with scantily clad women? Naruto inquired. A club with scantily clad women, Hakoda explained. It's right there, he said, motioning to a club. Thank you, Naruto said, using his katana as a crutch. I despise being wounded without Kyuubi, Naruto thought as he morphed into a small cute boy. Naruto entered to find Jiraiya surrounded by three women. Grandpa, why did you abandon me at the gate? Naruto asked, his face set to cry. Jiraiya's mouth opened wide. Naruto reverted to his original form. What exactly is this jutsu you wanted to show me? Naruto inquired. I despise you, Naruto, Jiraiya said. Whatever Aero sensei says, Naruto replied. Return in 15 minutes, Jiraiya said with a perverted grin. More like two seconds, Naruto said dryly, turning and walking right into a man. A drink was spilled on the man's coat. Oh, that hurt, Naruto murmured. Hey brat, that coat you just ruined cost the boss 300,000 Ryo. Exclaimed a man. Like I care, Naruto remarked. He drank his own drink and spilt it on his coat, he added. Do you know who you're referring to? Another man inquired. This man is an ex-chunin of Iwa, the great Gantetsu. Exclaimed the man. Hum. A no-named Iwa chunin, Naruto commented. You know I have a run on site status on anyone under chunin rank on me? Naruto inquired. I am Naruto Uzumaki, 
the Black Death of Konoha, Naruto introduced himself. Hey, I'm sure Iwa would love to have you, Gantetsu said as he approached Naruto. I guess you'll see a demonstration of what you'll be making, Jiraiya said, holding his arm back and forming a ball of chakra. That's similar to my jutsu, Naruto thought. Jiraiya yelled, Rasengan. As he slammed the ball into Gantetsu's stomach, sending him pinwheeling backwards into a stand. Jiraiya and Naruto made their way towards Gantetsu. Jiraiya easily lifted the man up, took his wallet, and handed the vendor some money. You don't mind paying for the damages, do you? Jiraiya inquired as Gantetsu groaned. And we will take all of your balloons and rubber balls, Jiraiya added as the vendor nodded and handed Jiraiya a large bag. Come on Naruto, Jiraiya said, leading Naruto out of the village. How strong is this jutsu? Naruto inquired. See this tree? Jiraiya asked, quickly summoning the Rasengan and slamming it into the tree, causing it to disintegrate. You have no idea how powerful that is. Naruto blew a whistle. That is powerful, but check out my own jutsu, Naruto said as he held out his palm, wind gathering and condensing into the shape of a sphere. The volume of a whistling noise began to rise. Naruto slammed the ball into a tree, and nothing happened for a few seconds before the tree trunk exploded in splinters and collapsed backwards. Seems like yours is the polar opposite of mine, elemental manipulation versus chakra manipulation, Naruto observed. He's already making a Rasengan counterpart, Jiraiya thought as he threw a water balloon at Naruto. Make it explode with your chakra, Jiraiya said as he picked up a balloon and made it spike in different directions before exploding. So basically, I spin my chakra around until it explodes? Naruto inquired, lightly biting into the balloon and crossing his fingers. Shadow Clone Jutsu He mumbled as twenty clones appeared around the balloon. You know what to do, Naruto said as Jiraiya observed all the clones attempting to blow up the balloon. Naruto will have this jutsu in no time, Jiraiya smirked. Remember, it took the fourth Hokage four years of development and three years to make it, and it took me three years to make it, Jiraiya said. Perhaps it's because you were spying on people, Naruto smirked as the clones made the balloon spike slightly before it returned to its round shape. Well, I'm off, Jiraiya said as he walked away. One week later. Naruto entered Jiraiya's in his room, placing the balloon over Jiraiya's sleeping form. Naruto began spinning the water in the balloon until it burst, drenching Jiraiya. He sputtered and turned to face Naruto. What did you do? Demanded Jiraiya. I popped it, Naruto smirked. Jiraiya's pupils constricted. Prove it, Jiraiya said as Naruto held another balloon, which promptly burst. Jiraiya let out a yawn. I suppose it's time for the second, more difficult step, Jiraiya said as he stood up and dressed. This step you'll discover as we walk. I got a tip about Tsunade being in a town two days away, Jiraiya explained. All right, let's go, Naruto said as he grabbed his pack. All right, Jiraiya said as he grabbed his bag. After two days, Naruto and Jiraiya had reached a new border village. The two made their way to a quieter part of town. I want you to stay out here, Naruto, Jiraiya said as he entered a building. He noticed men rolling dice. Hello sir, he said as he sat in front of what he assumed was the boss. What can I do for you? Inquired the man. I heard you had a gambler in here not long ago, Jiraiya mentioned. We get a lot of those types of people, said the man. This is a woman, Tsunade Senju, Jiraiya explained. Yes, the legendary sucker was here, said the man. Do you have any idea where she is? Jiraiya inquired. How about a game? The man suggested. Even though I tell you odd, you give me all your money, said the man. Deal. 
Jiraiya said as he watched the man throw the dice, which were on odd when a strong gust of wind blew through the building, flipping the dice to even. Jiraiya breathed a sigh of relief. Jiraiya was directed to a location by the man. Thank you, Jiraiya said as he walked out to see Naruto pull another ball out and throw a hole-filled ball away. We're leaving again, Naruto. Tsunade was last seen in Tanzaku Castle, Jiraiya explained. It'll be about a week, he added. All right, Naruto said. Kyuubi is still weak, Naruto reflected as he clutched his stomach. One week later. Naruto raised his eyes to the hill. Didn't you say there was a castle, Aero sensei Naruto inquired. Of course. Jiraiya trailed off, looking up to find no castle. They both jumped up onto a wall as soon as they saw people running. You what happened here? Jiraiya asked, gaining the attention of a man. A giant snake attack, he explained before resuming his run. Orochimaru, the two said quietly. Let's go, Naruto, Jiraiya said as he jumped down, followed by Naruto. They arrived at a bar and entered. Jiraiya came to a halt when he noticed a blonde, curvy woman. Tsunade, Jiraiya! exclaimed the two. Naruto blinked several times as he examined the woman, who appeared to be in her early thirties. What are you doing here, Jiraiya? Tsunade inquired as the two approached. And who exactly is the brat? This is Naruto Uzumaki, Jiraiya introduced himself. Jinchuriki Kyuubi? Thought the brunette and Tsunade. And why can't an old teammate see his old friends? Jiraiya inquired. There seem to be a lot of reunions today, Tsunade observed. Serutobi sensei has passed away, Tsunadeheim, Jiraiya explained. I know, Tsunade stated flatly. The council desires that you become Hokage, Jiraiya added. Tsunade said, no, and Jiraiya opened his mouth. Hokage is a fool's game. Anyone who becomes Hokage dies soon after, look at the fourth Hokage he d. She came to a halt when she sensed an unfathomable amount of killer intent directed at her. Do not speak ill of the fourth Hokage, or I will kill you, Naruto threatened. The fourth Hokage died to protect fool, and that makes him a fool. Tsunade said, opening her mouth to speak again when Naruto appeared on the table and effortlessly lifted her off the ground. Do you want to fight? Tsunade inquired. Let's take this outside, she said, hitting his arm and forcing him to let her go. Tsunade walked out, but Jiraiya stopped her. Don't underestimate this kid, and keep an eye on his stomach, Jiraiya cautioned. He can't be that powerful, he's a genin, Tsunade said as she walked away. Someone is going to get hurt, Jiraiya reasoned as he walked out and took a seat next to Shizune. To be fair. I'll only use one finger, Tsunade said. Don't be cocky, Naruto said as he prepared to throw a kanai when Tsunade appeared in front of him and struck upwards, knocking his forehead proctor and hood off. Naruto shut his eyes. He opened his eyes to see Tsunade's finger poised to flick. She let go of her finger and threw Naruto ten feet back before he rolled to his feet. Damn she's tough. Naruto thought as he rubbed his brow. Naruto threw a kanai at Tsunade, who swatted it away. Naruto immediately charged low and drew his katana. As he got closer, he whipped out his katana and swung at Tsunade while kicking. Tsunade deflected his kick with her foot and stopped the katana blade with her finger. Jiraiya thought to himself as he watched Tsunade cock her arm back and strike Naruto in the stomach. No. Jiraiya yelled as the three of them watched Tsunade's fist vanish into Naruto's stomach. Naruto coughed up blood and collapsed. W what h happened? Stuttered Tsunade. Jiraiya dashed over to Naruto and knelt beside him. Tsunade, 
You have to heal him, Jiraiya pleaded before ripping Naruto's shirt open, revealing the widened katana and kanai stabs. What happened to him? Suande asked, shakily beginning to heal him. He fought and defeated Minato and Kashina, Jiraiya stated. But it nearly cost him his life, but then he fought the one-tailed Jinchuriki, Jiraiya explained as her wounds healed. How is he alive? Tsunade wondered. Anyone would have died from these wounds. I personally believe his love for his lover kept him alive, Jiraiya explained. He's too young to know love, scoffed Tsunade. You'd think so, but if you saw the look in their eyes when they see each other, you'd know it's love, Jiraiya explained. Well, he'll be fine, Tsunade said, standing up a little shakily from the blood. Why is Kyuubi's charka so low, Jiraiya? Tsunade inquired. She expended most of her chakra fighting Gara, then expended even more keeping Naruto alive while he fought Gara, Jiraiya explained. Ah, why do I feel like I was hit by a freight train? Mumbled Naruto. How are you doing? Tsunade inquired. I heal quickly, Naruto said as he gripped his stomach to feel that it was mostly intact prompting him to look down and notice three small cuts. Did QB awaken? Naruto inquired. No, I healed you, Tsunade replied. Hum, that explains why it hasn't healed completely, Naruto said as a tick appeared on her head. Are you making fun of my healing abilities? exclaimed Tsunade. If I was, you'd know, Naruto said, grabbing his katana and slamming it into the ground to help him stand. Why did you hit me in the stomach? Naruto questioned. If I had known you were this badly hurt, I would have healed you first and then kicked your tiny ass. Tsunade exclaimed. Well, I'm healed now, Naruto said, stretching slightly. How about a rematch? Suggested Naruto. If I win, you acknowledge that the sixth Hokage was a good Hokage, and if I lose, you give me all of my money, Naruto explained. Hey, how much money could you have? Tsunade inquired as Naruto drew out a scroll and wiped some blood on it, revealing a pile of money. I have a lot of missing nins, Naruto said. I have ten more scrolls like this, Naruto said as he slid the scroll into his pocket. You're on exclaimed Suande greedily as Jiraiya groaned. I'll use one finger again. What is it? Shizune asked quietly. Naruto 10,000 won Ryo on a scratch ticket, Jiraiya explained. That's not all that unusual, Shizune said. This was a ticket with a maximum prize of $5,000, Jiraiya explained dryly. What kind of luck does he have? Shizune wondered as they watched Naruto charge Tsunade, hold his arm back, and charge an unfinished Rasengan. Shizune and Tsunade's pupils dilated. Tsunade shook her head and punched the ground with her fist. Rasengan slammed into the ground and threw himself away from Naruto. Damn it Jiraiya, what are you thinking teaching him something he'll never get? Tsunade yelled at Jiraiya as Shizune dashed to Naruto's aid. Jiraiya gave him a sly grin. What the hell is so hilarious? She exclaimed. One of the great Sanin was defeated by a genin, Jiraiya explained. And I will use one finger again, a certain blonde Sanin said, and Jiraiya perfectly imitated her voice. Suad's mouth moved back and forth. Hey brat. Tsunade exclaimed as Shizune drew him out of the fissure created by Tsunade's fist. Damn, she's got some incredible strength, Naruto thought. What? Naruto inquired. How about we place another wager? Tsunade suggested. If you win, I will give you this necklace and acknowledge that you will one day become Hokage, Tsunade said. You can't, Tsunade exclaimed Shizune. What's the big deal about it? Naruto inquired. That's the Shodai necklace. 
it's worth three gold mines and the mountains on top of them, Jiraiya said. And anyone who isn't destined to be Hokage dies soon after wearing it, Jiraiya thought. She must have a lot of faith in him, he continued. So, what do you think? She inquired. Sure, Naruto replied. Do you want to know what happens if you lose? Tsunade inquired. No, because I'm not going to lose, Naruto stated confidently. Okai, Tsunade said. I'll give you one week to finish the Rasengan, and if you don't finish it by the end of the week, you'll give up on being Hokage and I'll take all your money, she said. All right, Naruto said as he walked away. What are you doing? she inquired. To train, Naruto explained. The three stood there watching Naruto walk away. Tsunade smirked and reached for his frog wallet. I wouldn't do that, Tsunade, Jiraiya warned, but she ignored him and focused on the fat wallet. When she opened it, a puff of smoke appeared, followed by a pie striking her in the face. Tsunade tasted some of the pie as it slid off her face. Tsunade simply stated, it's good pie, before cleaning it up. She noticed the toad was still fat. Was it a pickpocket trap? Tsunade reasoned as she looked into the wallet to be sprayed with pink powder. Shizun turned around to see Jiraiya laughing and Shizun covering her mouth to keep from laughing. Tsunade charged at Jiraiya, roaring like an enraged gorilla. I'll get that brat for this, Tsunade promised. Nothing happened when Shizun looked into the wallet. She took out a note. Tsunade, don't think of getting me back. Most of my retaliations involve property damage, Shizun read aloud. She blinked several times. Is this kid a genius or a seasoned prankster? Shizun thought as a boxing glove attached to a spring launched over her shoulder and she heard a loud thunk, turning to see Jiraiya knocked out on the ground. Tsunade was laughing her head off this time. Shizun noticed another note. Arrow sensei don't try to grope Shizun Nei chan Shizun said over Tsunade's laughter. After six days. Naruto had started his training to complete the Rasengan six days before. He was training for 18 hours a day, rarely stopping for breaks. Tsunade was watching the boy make the Rasengan at the time. How does he train so hard and stay alive? Tsunade thought as she saw him attempt to make another Rasengan but end up passing out from exhaustion. Tsunade approached him and knelt beside him. She felt his forehead and checked his hands to see if he had a fever and severe chakra burns. She shook her head and took him in her arms. Tsunade didn't take long to get to the hotel where the four of them were staying. Shizun walked in as she was putting Naruto to bed. He'll be out of commission for at least two days. Shizun was informed by Tsunade. Tsunade-sama, what are your plans for tomorrow? Shizun inquired. That is none of your business. Tsunade turned to face her assistant. I doubt Uncle Dan would want TH. Tsunade appeared next to her and silenced her. I'm sorry, Shizun. Shizun fell forward unconscious, said Tsunade. The following morning. Naruto opened his eyes groggily and saw the ceiling. Oh my god, I passed out. Naruto exclaimed as he threw his legs over the side of the bed and ran outside, only to trip over something. Shizun was groaning on the floor when Naruto looked down. Naruto rushed to her side. What are you doing sleeping on the floor, Shizun Nei Chan? Naruto inquired. Sleeping? Shizun muttered before her eyes opened. Tsunade. She exclaimed as she noticed it was morning. How are you feeling, Shizun inquired. Even when I'm not using QB, my chakra replenishes at an incredible rate. Naruto informed her. What happened now? Naruto inquired. Tsunade-sama will meet with Orochimaru. She informed him. I have to put a stop to her. 
she went on to say. I'll be there. Shizun began to protest, so Naruto said. He forced me to murder my mother. Naruto snarled, I'll be there. Shizun stuck her head out the window, and a kanai whizzed by her head, he told her. Jiraiya was leaning against the wall when she noticed her. Wait a minute, Aero sensei you almost killed her. I would have killed her if I had wanted to. Jiraiya spoke softly. Plus, Tsunade drugged me, so I'm out of whack. He went on to say. You nearly killed me, Shizun thought dryly as she drew some pills from her purse. Here, take these. They'll help with the chakra control problem, she said as he looked at her with suspicion. Why would I poison an already poisoned man? She asked, as he looked at her skeptically. Geez fine. She grumbled, popping a pill into her mouth and swallowing it. See fine, she said as she pressed her palms into his. Now take the pills, she said. Jiraiya put the pills in his mouth and swallowed them. Where has she gone? Jiraiya insisted. You'll have to follow me, Shizun explained. Fine. Jiraiya exclaimed as the three jumped out the window. Naruto took a deep breath and sniffed the air. Kabuto has arrived, Naruto thought as he looked around. What's the hold up, Naruto? Jiraiya inquired. I think I smell something. Naruto observed his surroundings. You too proceed. As he sniffed the air, Naruto said. I can't detect anything. Jiraiya explained. Because of the QB, my sense of smell is as acute as that of a kitsune. Naruto informed them. I smell his stuffed animal. Naruto said as he drew his katana. Watch out, Naruto. Jiraiya said this just as Shizun and him leapt away. Naruto sniffed once more. Where could he possibly be hiding? Naruto thought as he noticed movement. Naruto immediately began to leap towards the movement. Did you sense me, Naruto-kun? Kabuto inquired. It's difficult to miss when you smell like death and snake summons. Naruto said this calmly. What shall we do now? He asked as the two began to circle. Well, Naruto-kun, I have a meeting. Kabuto said this before leaping away, with Naruto close behind. My speed is still not at its peak. Naruto reflected as he noticed Kabuto closing the gap between them. Together with Tsunade and Orochimaru. Tsunade approached Orochimaru with green glowing hands. I get my lover and brother back if I do this, right? Tsunade inquired. Of course, Tsunade-chan says. When a kanai nearly hit Tsunade and Kabuto landed behind Orochimaru, Orochimaru said. If you want to kill me, Kabuto, you'll have to do better. Orochimaru stated this. I suppose I would. Kabuto stated. But, Orochimaru-sama, I just saved you. She had enough chakra to kill you. Do you want to see Dan and Nawaki again, Tsunade-chan? Orochimaru inquired. They'd never want to see me like this. Tsunade stated simply as she removed her coat. We need to get moving, Orochimaru, Naruto-kun is right behind me. Orochimaru was informed by Kabuto. I suppose I'll have to force you to heal my arms, Tsunade-chan. Orochimaru stated this. I'd rather die. Tsunade slammed her fist against the wall behind her, causing it to explode. And I'll bring you along. She added as she flew at the two, who jumped away. Jiraiya and Shizun are present. The two were leaping from roof to roof towards their meeting point. Naruto leapt alongside them. Did you track down that person? Jiraiya inquired. Yeah, but he escaped, and my speed isn't at its peak right now. 
Naruto informed him. All right, did you figure out who it was? Jiraiya inquired. A boy named Kabuto was a Konoha shinobi, but he is Orochimaru's right-hand man. Or so I believe. Naruto said as they leapt and discovered a shattered wall. This is the work of Tsunade-sama. Shizune explained. It's her jacket. Naruto said picking as he took it. She is battling them. Naruto elaborated. We have to assist her. I know. Jiraiya said as they turned around to see Kabuto fighting Tsunade. It appears that Tsunade is victorious over Kabuto. Jiraiya said this after witnessing Kabuto stab his own hand and blood splatter all over Tsunade. What the hell, Kabuto just stabbed his hand. Jiraiya said as he noticed Tsunade fall to her knees. I will fight Orochimaru, Shizune, fight Kabuto, and Naruto, at all costs, protect Tsunade. Jiraiya asked, leaving no room for debate. As Shizune attacked Kabuto, he leapt towards Orochimaru and tackled him. Come on, Tsunade Ba-chan, snap out of it. As he wiped some blood from her face, Naruto said. Naruto turned around when he heard Shizune scream in pain, and he saw Shizune holding her leg with Kabuto standing over her. Naruto's Mental Landscape QB was sleeping against a tree. A pulse could be detected. QB began to stir within Naruto's mind. When her eyes suddenly opened. The real world. Naruto felt a pulse within him. What is going on? Naruto paused before a flood of chakra rushed through his body. QB, welcome back. Naruto reflected as he felt his wounds close. What have I been missing, Naruto-kun? QB inquired. Search my memories, Naruto said. Looks like we're even again, Kabuto. Naruto smirked as he pulled out his katana. We were never equal, Naruto-kun as stated by Kabuto. You are correct. Naruto said this while maintaining a defensive posture in front of Tsunade. You are sadly mistaken if you believe that provoking me will cause me to leave Tsunade's side. Naruto stated unemotionally. I would never try to provoke you, Naruto-kun. Kabuto stated. But I suppose it won't matter once we destroy Konoha. I'd never allow you to destroy Konoha. Naruto informed him. You're going to die today. As he charged at Naruto, Kabuto said. Naruto stabbed between the bones in Kabuto's forearm. Naruto violently twisted the katana and heard a loud snapping noise. Hey, Naruto-kun, that was a brilliant idea. As he leapt away, Kabuto demonstrated how quickly his forearm was healing. He heals almost as quickly as I do. Naruto reflected as he re-readied his katana. Naruto deflected a blow to the head and slashed upward, leaving a long cut. Kabuto drew a kanai. Naruto dodged and attempted to hit Kabuto, who dodged to the side and tapped Naruto's leg, causing him to hear a loud snapping noise. Naruto's leg was on the verge of collapsing. Shit. I've got to keep him still. Naruto-kun, you should compact the Rasengan even more. QB provided advice. As Kabuto approached, Naruto sheathed his katana. Naruto grabbed Kabuto's fist and winced as the kanai in Kabuto's hand cut the flesh between his fingers. All right, compact it a little more. As he focused on the Rasengan, Naruto reflected. As Kabuto tried desperately to flee, he felt it stabilize in his hand. I don't believe so. Naruto stated, cocking his arm back. Rasengan. Naruto slammed the chakra ball into Kabuto's stomach, yelling. As a sphere of chakra surrounded Kabuto, Naruto let go, allowing Kabuto to fly backwards. Naruto dropped to one knee as he felt his heart rate slow. 
Naruto turned around to see Kabuto slam into a boulder with a satisfying thud. Naruto stood there watching Kabuto fall to the ground. Naruto-kun, he severed the chakra lines leading to your heart and destroyed the majority of your muscles. I can't heal it. QB stated. It'll be interesting to see if I survive. Naruto chuckled and thought. He could feel blood dripping down his chin. Naruto was surprised to see Kabuto standing up. Hey Naruto-kun, if I hadn't sent my chakra to the point of impact and started healing myself, that would have killed me. When Kabuto's eyes widened and he fell onto his stomach, he said. There has been far too much damage. As he noticed Naruto swaying, Kabuto had a thought. You must have realized you were almost dead. As Naruto began to fall backwards, Kabuto spoke up. Who would have thought I'd die like this? Naruto pondered. Naruto-kun, it's getting dark. Really dark. Naruto could tell she was scared by the tone of her voice. Tsunade hovered over Naruto, causing him to spit up blood. I guess I won Tsunade ba bet. Chan's Naruto said this as his lungs began to fill with blood, causing him to cough. However, you may keep the necklace. Naruto looked up at her, smiling. You can't die, Naruto. She exclaimed as she cut his shirt with her chakra. She ran her hand quickly over his heart, attempting to heal the chakra paths. Please don't give me another one. Tsunade said as she noticed his heartbeat slowing. Naruto's mental landscape. QB was standing in the dim light of Naruto's mindscape. Who would have guessed this is how I die? QB reflected as the light faded closer to her. She suddenly heard drips as the light began to return. The real world. Tsunade sobbed over Naruto's body as his heart began to stop. Do not take another one from me. Tsunade begged, pressing her hands against his chest. Naruto's back arched as she felt red chakra surge through him. Naruto. She exclaimed as she felt his heart rate rise once more. A hand wrapped around the necklace around her neck. Ia gesa thesa isamine. Naruto said weakly, smiling. You will undoubtedly throw a wrench in my plans, Naruto-kun. Orochimaru exclaimed as he spit his sword at Naruto, who was immobile. Tsunade appeared between Naruto and the sword, which pierced her chest. That was meant for you, Tsunade-chan. As he ripped the sword from her chest and kicked her away, Orochimaru said. It's time to finish you off. Orochimaru slashed at Naruto, who weakly deflected his sword with his katana. I'm amazed you're still moving. Orochimaru stated, noticing Naruto's inability to move. 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 As the sword moved towards him again, Naruto tried to move. He closed his eyes but felt no pain. Naruto opened his eyes to see Tsunade all over him again. I will not allow you to murder this boy. Tsunade grumbled. I don't want to kill you now, Tsunade-chan. Orochimaru said as he slashed at her back, attempting to move her. Tsunade gave him a weak kick. How will you beat me if you're shaking so much, Tsunade-chan? He said this as he noticed her shaking stop. I will guard this boy. Tsunade stated this. And I will not let you destroy Konoha because I am the Godam Hokage. Tsunade exclaimed before delivering a powerful blow to Orochimaru's chest. Then I will murder you. Orochimaru stated this. Tsunade made a hand gesture, and a seal appeared on her face. You can't do that, Tsunade. Shizun yelled as she completed her leg healing. Please allow me to heal you. She exclaimed. Tsunade began to make hand gestures. Creation rebirth. 
exclaimed Tsunade as the seal broke and chakra began to flow through her, healing her severe wounds. I cannot be killed like this, Tsunade said as she began to make hand gestures. Summon. She yelled in unison with her teammates. Three enormous forms stood in the field. One was a toad, another was a slug, and the third was a snake. It's been a long time, Katsuya. Gamabunta addressed the slug. Gamabunta kun, it's been a while. Katsuya concurred. I could have gone a long time without seeing him. Gamabunta said this in reference to the snake. However, I suppose I could use a snakeskin wallet. I suppose I'll have frog legs for dinner. Gamabunta was enraged by what the snake said. Take Naruto to Shizune, Katsuya-chan. Tsunade murmured as Katsuya's giant head nodded, and a piece of her rose under Naruto in the form of a small slug, slithered off of Katsuya's head, and slammed against the ground with a thud. Katsuya moved closer to Shizun. Lady Tsunade requested that I bring Naruto-kun to you. Shizun, Katsuya said. Try to heal him if you can. I can tell he's been through a lot. She went on to say. Katsuya-sama, could you please heal his minor injuries? Shizun inquired. I'll try to heal his leg, but I'll have to return to the main body. Katsuya spoke as Naruto's leg merged with her own. I believe Naruto chest kuns is also damaged. Kyuubi is attempting to heal it, but she is unable to direct most of her chakra to his chest. Shizun was informed by Katsuya. All right, Katsuya-sama. Shizun said this as she ran her green glowing hands across his chest. First, heal the chakra lines. Katsuya gave advice while healing Naruto's leg. Shizun nodded, his gaze fixed on the chakra lines. I must depart, Shizun-chan. As Naruto's leg detached from her, Katsuya said. All right, Katsuya-sama. Shizun spoke as the small Katsuya approached the main body. Shizun watched the battle between the three summons and their summoners. She noticed Naruto start to move. Are you awake, Naruto-kun? She inquired. Hum, Shizun ne chan what happened? Naruto inquired. Well, you persuaded Tsunade-sama to become the Godam Hokage. Shizun explained. And you nearly died. Hanadaheim will murder me. Naruto muttered. Hanadaheim? Shizun inquired. I told my girlfriend I was going to take it easy. Naruto informed her. Well, you're fine now, and I'm sure she won't notice. Shizun said as Naruto looked her in the eyes. She possesses the Byakugan, Naruto stated. You're fucked. Shizun smirked as they heard a loud thud followed by ground shaking. They turned to see Manda holding Gamabunta's sword in his mouth, with Tsunade standing on the hilt of the sword, holding Orochimaru's tongue. Orochimaru flew towards her after she gave a huge tug. She cocked her chakra-enhanced fist. When Orochimaru came into her range, she threw her punch, which landed with a satisfying crunch in Orochimaru's jaw. Tsunade followed Orochimaru, punching and kicking him as he flew towards the ground. I have to keep doing this, Tsunade thought as she felt her chakra leave her. She kept punching him. She finished with a kick that pushed Orochimaru away. They stood there watching as Orochimaru began to stand. I'm not going to be able to beat them. Orochimaru considered this as he leapt to Kabuto and the two sank into the ground. Tsunade landed on the ground, and Katsuya and Gamabunta puffed away. Shizun assisted Naruto in standing, and the two proceeded to Tsunade and Jiraiya. As they got closer, they noticed Tsunade was getting older. Are you going to be all right? Jiraiya inquired, his gaze fixed on his teammate. All I need is something to eat and a good night's sleep, and I'll be fine. 
Tsunade responded as she noticed Shizun assisting Naruto in getting over to them. How are you doing, Naruto? Tsunade inquired. I've been good and bad. Tsunade lightly bopped Naruto on the head, and he replied with a smirk. Don't laugh, you nearly died, Tsunade said. Well, I did make a full Rasengan. Tsunade's eyes widened as Naruto spoke. I guess I'll have to keep an eye on him so the curse doesn't take him. Tsunade pondered this as she untied the necklace and wrapped it around his neck. Come on everyone, let's go get some rest, said Tsunade. You look as if you need it, Ba-chan. As Tsunade approached, Naruto mumbled. What exactly was it? Tsunade inquired, threateningly. There is nothing, Hokage-sama. Naruto said as he saluted her. That's what I thought. And don't address me as Hokage-sama. It's making me feel old. As Naruto opened his mouth, Tsunade said. Ba-chan is even worse. Why can't you just call me Tsunade ne chan like you do Shizun? Tsunade inquired. Not happening, Naruto replied. How about I come up with something? Naruto suggested. Fine. Tsunade mumbled something. In the meantime, I'll refer to you as Ba-chan. Naruto smirked as Tsunade attempted to hit him half-heartedly. What about you, Tsunade-sama? Naruto shook his head as Tsunade suggested. Tsunade-chan? No, Naruto said as the four of them walked towards the hotel where they were staying. You'll be Ba-chan until I think of something. Naruto stated. Fine, until you come up with something new, I'll call you Naru-chan. Tsunade exclaimed as she noticed Naruto cringe. Ba-chan. Naruto exclaimed angrily. Okay, Naru-chan, come on. Naruto sighed in defeat and followed the three adults to their hotel rooms, Tsunade said with a smirk. After two days. Do you really believe you can beat me because you mastered the Rasengan, Naru-chan? Tsunade inquired, smirking. No, I think I'll do better now that Kyubi Chan is awake because my chakra is much higher. As he charged at Tsunade, Naruto said. Naruto's forehead protector flew off his head as he stood in front of Tsunade. He closed his eyes, expecting a flick to the brow, but nothing happened. Naruto opened his eyes just as Tsunade's lips touched his brow. That is a unique charm. She informed the youngster. How come she can't kiss me? Take a guess at who that was. Naruto blushed and averted his gaze from the older woman. She chuckled a little. Okay, Naru-chan, come on. Tsunade approached the dazed boy. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.